to story time thank you for joining me on this lovely wednesday morning i am so happy you're here for story time thank you thank you for being here for taking the time to enjoy amazing stories and of course this week we're saying thank you to one of our biggest supports chronicle books of san francisco we have enjoyed amazing books here on story time 87 to be specific up to this point so thank you so much to chronicle books and the amazing work that they're doing and of course to all the creators out there as well thank you for being here on story time please as always let me know where you're joining us from and who is joining in with you wherever you're in the world good morning good afternoon good evening to you i hope this story today brings you joy and of course it is a heartwarming story a beautiful story indeed and of course today we have a special guest that will be joining us as well later on and her name is Victoria Rock how who is that? Yes, indeed. Victoria Rock will be here. She's one of the founding publishers for the children's division at Chronicle Books. So excited for her to be here and share the power behind the magic, the books that we see here. She's part of that world that brings us this amazing world that we get to share here on Storytime. Thank you so much for being here. And as always, please let me know where you are and who is joining in with you. Let us see who is with us today. Who is first through the door? Baby, B how are you doing today with Amanda? Thank you for joining us. Good morning to you. And you say, baby Bia is here along with big sister Mar Marlin. Marlin, I hope I got that correctly. Thank you for the pronunciation in there too. <laughs> How are you doing, Marlin? Thank you so much for being here on Storytime. Yes, thank you for joining us one more time. And baby Bia, always a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amanda, as well. Welcome today. I hope you're having yourself a beautiful day. And good morning to you, Madalena Ayan and Tudor, joining us from San Francisco. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. As always, happy to have you here. Good morning to you right next door. Good morning to you, Ellen Edwards in sunny Chicago. Well, I hope you're enjoying it. And please, please, thank you for bringing that sunshine here to story time. Glad you're here with us. Thank you so much for joining in, Ellen. Amanda West and Nathan and Sarah out in sunny Illinois. Yes, indeed, Illinois is bright today. Thank you for joining in and thank you for being here for story time. Good morning to you and welcome, welcome, welcome. Betty Graydon out all the way in Florida. Good morning to you. Thank you for being here. Good to see you. Thank you so much. <laughs> And good morning to you, Aurelia Lee. We have not seen you for a minute. Thank you so much for joining in with Andres out in Harrisburg. Thank you for being here. Good morning to you. Welcome to story time. Thank you so much. Good morning to you. And of course, from Louisiana, Nakitash, Louisiana. Good morning to you, Pamela Courtney. And of course, Braylon Kavaya and Chad. Good morning to you. Thank you for being here. And you say our city is the first to to purchase 
the Louisiana purchase. It's wet here, but we are eating crawfish. Well, that just sounds amazing. Thank you for the little history lesson, but of course for sharing what you're doing right now. Absolutely love it. Thank you for being here. Pamela Courtney, always insightful. Thank you. Thank you for being here on Storytime. Yes, like I mentioned, we do have a very special guest that will join us at the end of our reading today. So I hope you're ready. Amazing. And also get to learn a little bit more about the amazing book that we're reading today and everything else that happens in the amazing magic world of publishing. Thank you so much for joining in story time today. We will be getting started with our story very soon. Please get cozy, get comfortable wherever you are and get ready for this amazing, wonderful story. Hello, Rain. And this one is written by Keo McClare and illustrations by Chris Turnham. Good morning to you and welcome. And I hope you're ready for this one. Beautiful cover, beautiful illustrations and a beautiful book awaits us today. Get ready for this one. And of course, we're reading it with permission of Chronicle Books of San Francisco. Remember this week, we're looking at amazing spring releases from Chronicle Books and just saying a big thank you for all the support that they've given Storytime during this past year. Thank you for being here and I hope you're ready for this story. We are going to get started. <laughs> And for those that have joined in or will be joining in on Zambian time, well, welcome. And I hope that later on you can still go ahead and find this beautiful story. And remember to, to ask for these books at your local libraries. They're there for a reason. Ask for them. Tell your librarians you want to see those books. And of course, if you can and you're able, please do check out the links below on where you can get yourself copies for yourself. But for now, here we go. Hello, Rain. This one by Keo McClare and... Chris Turnham. All right, here we go. Hello, Rain. Written by Keo McClare and Chris Turnham. And of course, being read with permission of Chronicle Books of San Francisco. The air is full of waiting. The sky is full of breeze. The trees gust and billow, all before it rains. Rumble, rumble, distant thunder. Rain is coming, rain is coming. <clears throat> oh, I love this book so much. Plink, plunk, plunk on the roof. Uh-huh. Drip, drop, metal mail mailbox, ping. Every rainfall plays a different tune. Listen, listen. Rain, rain, rain. <laughs> oh. Old rain cot, rubber boots, big umbrella, best umbrella. Green, orange, yellow, blue. Let's go outside. <laughs> Who's going to play splash with us? Yes. On the streets, umbrellas bloom. Around us, a game of hurry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dash, dart, skitter, scatter. But why hurry when the sky is an adventure? <laughs> Is it an adventure for you? <laughs> Deluge, downpour, sprinkle, storm, a drizzle, a mizzle. <laughs> so many words for rain. Long thin, long thin threads, tiny parachutes, buckets at a time. Out of many drops, one big. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Out of many drops, one big puddle. Ah, <laughs> oh, the joy. <laughs> Curbside waterfall, downhill swoosh. Out of many drops, one rushing river. 
Let's launch the fleet. <laughs> oh, I remember playing in the rain as a kid. Amazing. <laughs> Drippy leaf, slippy rock. Be careful. Here is an earthworm, a sticky snail. Here is a seedling. Oh, even when it pours, the frogs don't hurry or hide. <laughs> I want to be like the frog. <laughs> oh, foxglove, hyacinth, poppy, yarrow. Down in the dirt, the thirsty roots are drinking. Yes. <laughs> cool rain, fresh rain, a barrel to catch the drops of the drops for later so we can have pink roses freely peonies tangos of vine bursting pea pods bright carrots leafy radishes plums plums in the fridge sweet and cold one for you one for me <laughs> oh. in a quiet spot a single drop of rain touches five times. A branch, a leaf, an apple, a rock, a blade of grass before reaching the ground. We crouch under a tree and whisper talk until... <laughs> and whisper talk until... Crick! Crack! Flash! Oh, we know what that is. <laughs> Time to go. That look. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> I'm with you, my friend. Inside, wet socks, drippy pants. Shake, shake, shake. Oh, rain drenched fur. Yes, indeed. Inside, dry and warm. Rain trickle flows against the window. Mini rivers. Droplets joining, moving down, down, side to side. <laughs> oh. Want to play a board game? Want to read a book? Want to build a fort? Oh, all those sounds so great in the rain, don't they? On a rainy day. Naps and secrets are both better. When it rains, so true. <laughs> oh, I wonder how the rain decides how and when to be. <laughs> I wonder that too. I wonder how it decides when to plunk, plank, plink, or stop. <laughs> Do you ever wonder that? <laughs> the ground is glistening green. Can you smell the grassy sweat, sweetness? Butterflies and bugs sip, sip, sip from muddy puddles. Can you hear the chirping birds? Oh, listen closely. <laughs> Hello, sparrows with your bright sparrow voices. Hello, goldfinches with your sweet, sweet song. Hello, flowers. Ripe and rosy. Hello, mushrooms. Plump and proud. <laughs> oh, hello, sun. <laughs> oh, so, such a sweet book. The end. Thank you so much for joining in story time today. But please do not go away. Stick around because we have an amazing guest today. And guess what? She also had a part in the making of this magic. I hope you enjoyed that book today. Such a lovely book indeed. Hello, Rain by Cleo McClare, by Keo McClare, and illustrations by Chris Turnham. I hope you enjoyed it. Please find it at your local library or check below the links and see where you can get yourself a copy. For now, we're going to invite on our guest, Victoria Rock. How cool is that name? Please welcome Victoria Rock today, founding publisher from Chronicle Books. Thank you so much 
much for joining us today, Victoria. Welcome to Storytime. Hello, everybody. I loved that reading. I can't wait for Keo and Chris to hear it too. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, welcome. Please tell us who you are. Uh, well, my name is Victoria Rock, as you said, and I came to Chronicle Books almost 34 years ago to start the children's list. Just saying that makes me feel very old. Um, <laughs> And we Chronicle was a very small company then. We were about 15 people. Now wow. we're now we're more than 150, I think. There was one children's editor, me, and now we have nine children's editors. And our first children's list was six books. And now I think we publish more than six books a month. So we've grown. <laughs> yeah. We've grown up. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So please tell us about um, I know you have a few things that you wanted to share with us, but Yes. Tell us about this amazing book. Yes, so it how, is an amazing book. I'm it, so glad you love it. Yeah, how does it feel to be a part of, you know, like something so special? Of course, that's something that becomes so special to so many people. Well, that's the hope. You hope that a book goes out there and it finds people who love it, and especially uh, children who love it. You know, those of us who are grown up can remember books that we really, really loved as children and made us readers and book lovers for life. So you always hope when you work on a book that it will land in the hands of somebody who feels that way about that mm -hmm. book. So I hope that happens. I'm a rain lover. So this book um, is a book that I personally love. Um, and one of the questions you asked me uh, the other day was how books come to be. Right. The answer to that is they come to be in so many different ways, but usually the words come first and then the pictures come. But in this case, this book was inspired by this picture. Whoops. Huh. Um, would you see you see that, uh, let me. Whoops, there we go. You can see it's similar to uh, what's in the book, but also very different. And this is a, the, uh, Chris Turnham is a printmaker. This was a print that he made and it was part of a mailing about, with other, some other images about rain with seven artists. And the person who sent it me that email said seven reasons to love the rain. Oh. And I saw Chris's picture and I was like, oh, I love that picture. And so I said to him, that sounds like a book idea. And I think uh, Lydia Yamaguchi, who's here listening to us today, said this <laughs> reminds her of the many reasons she loves the rain. And when we first started working on this book, I said, maybe we could do a book that was called something like 51 Reasons to Love the Rain. Right. Um, and so that was how it started. And then uh, Chris thought he might write it. He, this was the very first book he started working on. He's had several published in the interim. Mm -hmm. And we decided that we wanted him to focus on the pictures and we would try to find a wonderful uh, writer who loved nature. And Keo is an amazing writer. She's so poetic. Um, and But her texts are um, so easy to enter into. And yet they're so... Um, specially written and that's what I think children's books do is they're kind of deceptively simple they're easy for us to read and understand but you could spend hours talking about the text or the pictures of a book so we don't have that time today so I won't <laughs> but that's how that book started and that's very unusual yeah no it's amazing. And I think when you look so if you compare that image that I just showed you to this one. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm not very camera savvy. No, you, you're good. Let me do this. That, that okay. You can still hear me though. Yeah. But you can see if you look at that little girl compared to this child, it's Chris, but the style is very different. And right. so one of the people who helps create a book is the designer of the book and the designer and the designer in this case is Sarah Gillingham. Her book is, her name is in the book. Um, the designer and the editor really work together to help suggest to the um, artist what they might do with their style for a particular book. And we really wanted it to feel very kid friendly. Mm -hmm. um, and so Chris was able to just make little slight changes, change the shapes of the nose, change the colors a little bit to make it be much more a book that um, really felt like kids would love it. Um, and uh, I, you, you can also see if I move the book, 
Can you see the shiny raindrops? Oh, yeah. Okay. So another member of the team who helps make a book is the, so the designer comes up with ideas like that, but so does the production manager who works with the designer and then the printer to actually make the books print and happen. <laughs> um, and we all, so what I really love about making books is that it starts with an idea and talking about ideas is something I love to do. But it also takes a team of people that you don't even know as a reader were there to come up with lots of different ways to make the book special. And so the production does, the production manager is one of those people who helps us say, like, yes, we can make shiny raindrops on the front. Right. That's amazing, too. I think you, you that point that you bring up of um, the behind the scenes crew, because we see books and usually we see the name on the book or the names on the books. And. That's, you know, like that's our association, but we forget there's this whole supporting cast that comes with it. That's right. We're lots of secret helpers behind <laughs> it, trying to make the book be the best book that it possibly can be. And as an editor, that's my job. I think of myself as the book's best friend. So I talk to the designer. I talk to the people who are going to arrange to print it. I talk to the people who make the schedules. I talk to the people who, um, you know, market it. Um, I write the flapped copy. Oh. Um, if you go, I write our catalog copy. If you uh, look online anywhere, usually that copy will be drawn from something that somebody at Chronicle Books created. Um, another element of books that I always want people to look for is that sometimes when you peek under the jacket, you get a nice surprise. Yeah. Um, sometimes underneath the jacket is the same as the cover, but sometimes it's different. And look what a beautiful idea Sarah had to put on the case of this book. It's yeah. just beautiful. Yeah, that is that is beautiful. And and what decision, like when do you decide to make it the same and or different? Like well, I like them always to be different. And uh these days that's uh very popular. There was a period of time when uh librarians and teachers asked us and some parents um, not to make them different because they often take the jackets off <laughs> because they don't want them to get damaged if they're going to be used um, by a lot of kids. So that was a little sad as a book creator when we went through that period. But I think that what we discovered, I certainly discovered this with my kids, was that they just learned to recognize the, the thing that was on the case underneath. That's what we call the bit underneath the case. And so I think we all learned that, you know, kids are smart. They can find the book that they want to find, even if the jacket's not on it. So now we're back in a time when everybody actually really loves something different to be under the case. Yeah. Wow. No, that's, that's amazing. I also just uh, wanted to bring in, um, I'm, I'm sure you saw this message from Harmony Beth, who's one of my favorite people here too. And she, she was just saying how creative folks are, you know, like yourself bring us oh, such amazing you. and wonderful books. And I just thought I should highlight that. And then I've Angela Darton here as well, an amazing author herself. And um, um, she just says, you know, like, I love how interactive this book is. Thank and you, Angela. Yeah. We appreciate that. We want them to be fun to read and we want them to have lots of things that people can go back and see something or hear something different each time they read the book. Um, and I think, so another bit that I love are end papers. So you can see here, uh, Sarah created blue end papers. And then at the back, when the sun comes out, we have yellow end oh, papers. Oh, that, you know, those are the little details that sometimes I'll see, you know, like you'll see it, but because you don't have that extra information and you, you don't think about it, but that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. so we, we like to think about those things. That's what makes it <laughs> really different. Yeah. And then just a couple of other quick things in here, like this spread, um, what Chris did so well here is we see a hint of the girl and the dog. And then when we turn the page, of course we get to see them up close. Yeah. And uh, Chris worked as an animator before he became a bookmaker. And so he's really good at creating that sense of movement, like a camera, like we've moved from far away from the house to up close to the house. Sorry, I know I'm doing a bad job holding the no, book. No, no, you, you're great. And just more love for the book. This is Jade and um, uh, Eva Scarlett. They're all the way out in England. So I absolutely love it too, yeah. 
And then this clever umbrella that sort of feels like a color wheel and like a rainbow. Um, and there it is talking about colors. And then here we have another version of that image that Chris originally sent, but you can see inside the book, her arm is pointing toward the middle of the book because that helps us as readers go right into the picture. Oh, wow. <laughs> but on the jacket, whoops, She's pointing the other way because as readers, that really helps us say, oh, let's open up that book. So we don't want it pointing that way. We want it pointing into the book to say, open me and read me. Wow, yeah. So just little things like that. And then um, this is such an amazing artistic spread that the wonderful words that Keo came up with for rain yeah. and that amazingly creative idea to show the puddle and the child in a way that's just so different than, you know, just a child standing in front of a puddle to see the child reflected in the puddle. Yeah. And for me, for that part, you know, as a, as a, a, a teacher for lower elementary kids, like, building vocabulary is so important and this yeah. makes it so easy to bring that the difference like oh this, we're talking about rain how how uh, the different levels of it and so just like being help, be able to help build that i think have that in the book already kind of um tacked in is so cool yes and that's where keo is wonderful because it's poetic you can you know you can think about poetry you can think about vocabulary um, you can think about nature because it really is ultimately a nonfiction book. Um, you know, and then there's this wonderful puddle spread that you did such a great um, reading of. And for me, I love the rain and I wanted a big puddle spread. So that was also what we think about originally. This was a jumping in the puddle with all the text together. Mm. With, you know, but I read the manuscript over and over and over again, always out loud because it's a picture book. And I was, and I said, what if we did puddle by itself so that we could have an amazing moment of that joy of jumping mm. in the rain? And Chris really delivered that way. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's such a beautiful book, honestly. And yeah. then lastly, you know, here's a bit of nature, but also very, very close, right? We're down in the leaves. Mm. And then here we see the roots, which we don't always think about when we're thinking about the rain. Okay. And then here he goes overhead. And again, I think that's his animation training. <laughs> um, but isn't that a wonderful scene that shows us the whole landscape in a way we don't usually as people get to see it. If we were a bird, that's what it would look like. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so he does that a lot. Then the next spread, we're up close. And then, you know, the fact that Keo didn't say, oh, there's lightning. She gave us the sounds. And then Chris gave us the beautiful, like I can hear the lightning. Um, so those are things to notice, just the ins and the outs. And this is similar to the drizzle mizzle page. Mm -hmm. But again, you can imagine what it looks and feels like when the rain ends. And then another overview shot. So to think about how is an artist giving us motion? How are the words giving us sound or feeling? Um, all of those things are so important in a book. Yeah. So you mentioned that this book was inspired by the picture first, the picture came yeah. first, and then for the rest of it. So did Keo then do the text and then Chris do the pictures for that? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. oh. yeah. So, um, you know, we did go down trying to have it be a text about a lot of reasons and that, but that just sounded more like a list. So slowly we started hacking it back. I, I think one, I think great writers our, the definition of a great writer is someone who is a great reviser. And if you could see the beginning of what the text looked like and where it ended up, they're like cousins to one another, but they're very different. Um, mm. And that's because Keo just kept on thinking and thinking and thinking about how can we tell this? And then we realized it was all about the reasons to love the rain, but it wasn't 51 reasons to love the rain anymore. And so that was how we ended up with Hello Rain. That's that's amazing. And just, you know, like uh, you've mentioned, you've 34 years of, you know, working in such an amazing world. Um, what was the first book you worked on or, you know, like that all other books that we might know as well? 
Um, well, a couple of the first books I worked on were um, books by Taro Gomi. Do you know? Mm. Uh, so, so he's a Japanese um, author and illustrator. So our first list of books were actually books that were published overseas and we wrote the text, the English text for them and published them here. Um, after that, like Mama, Do You Love Me is a book that we published that's still in print. I'm trying to oh, think of ones that are still that. in print. I love that one. <laughs> um, there's a uh, The Night I Followed the Dog by Nina Layden. I don't know if you're oh, familiar. No. That's a very funny book. Oh, um, and then Nina Layden went on to uh, write many, many books, both with us and other people. But she wrote Pikachu, which is a fantastic board book for um, very young children. Oh. Um, you know, of course, I worked on the um, Ivy and Bean books with Annie, who I know that you have spoken with and talked about her books. Um, I uh, recently worked with Sophie Blackall on um, If You Come to Earth, and I oh. saw. Yeah. Or, yeah, no, that is, it's such a lovely book too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like I have here, I have her book. Like last year, I actually worked on two different books about oh, Earth. Okay, yeah, yeah, I've, I've, we've read both. Let me just, uh, again, just show Sorry. you. Yeah, no, yeah. my friend. Uh, so they're very different to one another, even though they're both about Earth. Right. Um, so, you know, Sophie, we we published, Chronicle published Sophie's first picture book, which was called Ruby's Wish. Uh, she didn't write it. Uh, Sharon Bridges wrote it. Yeah. Um, and then she did Ivy and Bean with us all these years. But uh, If You Come to Earth was her second picture book. And so yeah. with Chronicle. Um, so, you know, it's nice to have worked with somebody for probably 30 years. Yeah, that's that's amazing because every time, you know, like with book series, sometimes you don't think about it. But I feel like with movies or TV shows, we think of, oh, you know, like there's this cast, there's this story that's come on. And then when it comes to an end, you're like, you, you somehow think of those people in the background. But for books, yes. it's just like, at least for me, I don't know about others, but it's always like, oh, there's a book. and But now it's really giving me that to be more deliberate about thinking of, you know, the everybody that makes makes the magic happen, everybody that helps in bringing that, creating these wonderful books. Yeah, so of course the beauty of a book is you get lost in it and you don't think about anybody who mm. made it <laughs> in the story and absorbed by the pictures. And that's what we hope, hope happens with the books. But if it's a book that you really love, you can read it a second or a third or a 10th or a hundredth time. Right. And those times you can look for different details each time. What did they do on the case? How did they decide what words were on each spread and how does that help with keeping the story literally moving forward by having you either turn a page quickly or sometimes stay for a slow reading on a certain spread. So there's all kinds of decisions that happen. What kind of paper did they print it on? Right. What's on the jacket? Is there glitter on the jacket? Is there foil on the jacket? Maybe the jacket doesn't need anything like that. There's yeah. decisions, every single part of a book. Um, has a decision, somebody, several people worked as a team to make a decision. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Victoria. Sure. My pleasure. Like, it's yeah, if before we close, is there anything else that you feel like I want to, you know, like just put this out there too about books, about yourself, about Chronicle, anything that, you know, just. No, we're so happy that people like you are reading our books and you read them so wonderfully. And I see all your fans are learning about our books by you reading them to them. And we work very hard to make the books happen and we don't get to see them really land in the hands of children. So it's very exciting when we know that um, people are putting them either literally in their hands or in this mm, case, especially mm. this year, in their screens. Yeah. Um, and that that kind of reading is still happening even when we're in a pandemic is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right, no, and uh, before I let you go, just a quick, also oh, I see Love for Ruby's Wish there, Harmony Beth. Yeah, it is a, a beautiful book too. And then just Jennifer there, Munier, appreciating um, that conversation that we're having and of course the, the, the insight that you bring Victoria I think is just so amazing to to learn and uh, how many again you say is enlightening I think that's truly what it is thank you so much Victoria I think my pleasure I, lovely I've learned so much you know and even just this one book now like even takes on greater meaning greater appreciation for it because it 
you see so much that goes behind it and you know like even some of the little things that i hadn't noticed before thanks for bringing those to the fore <laughs> yes it's my pleasure and as i said i i'm a little shy so seeing someone who can so exuberantly read the book um is amazing for me so thank you no absolutely wonderful thank you well bye everybody bye bye thank you so much and um Oh, that was the amazing Victoria Rock. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from her. I certainly did. And I'm, I'm so glad that we were able to have her here, have somebody that is behind the scenes in making so many great books happen, so much magic happen. Thank you, Victoria. And of course, a big thank you to also to Chronicle Books for allowing her to be here today. And of course, for supporting Storytime this past year. It has been amazing. Thank you so much. And to everybody that joined in, I know, and stuck around to listen to that great conversation. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support as always. I wish you a beautiful, beautiful day where you are. Much love from me. Hugs and love to each and every one of you. You please join me tomorrow. We're continuing to celebrate Chronicle Books and their amazing work. So please do join us tomorrow for another one, a book for the season indeed. Have you ever seen a flower? This one is written and illustrated by Sean Harris. That name sounds familiar. Find out again why it does, because it is brilliant, multi-talented. And please, please do join me tomorrow again for that beautiful story and find out what it's all about. Thank you so much for being here absolutely appreciate it and um i wish you nothing but the very best good to see you here harmony beth as always much love for you thank you for being here lydia yamaguchi thank you so much for sharing your joy with us as well thank you jade and ava scarlet good to see you here after a long time thank you for catching us to everybody that joined in much love to you i know we've been here a minute but it has been great thank you thank you i wish you the very best of days today and and of course, I wish to see you again tomorrow when we're back with more story time. And tomorrow, get ready. Bring your pencil, bring your paper, because we will be drawing with the amazing Sean Harris. Please do not forget, the brackets are happening. March, March Madness is happening. Book March Madness. I filled out my bracket. I'm trying not to show you what I wrote on here, so you can do your own, and we'll see how our books will do. Voting for the first part is done. There's some books already that have been voted Sorry, on. I'm having trouble here. Not you, Siri. For so voting is already done for some of the <laughs> voting is already done for some of the books, and we have four books again that you can vote on today. Well, we have eight books, so it's four brackets that you can vote on today. Please do join in on that tomorrow. I'll be able to actually show you um, a whole um, uh, a whole Google slide on what's happening and where you can vote. But for now, please remember, go and look for the March Madness on the Storytime platforms. Find it on the website. You will find a link there and vote. Vote on Instagram as well as voting on Facebook. So thank you so much for joining in today. As always, it is much love from me. Thank you for joining me for this beautiful story time that we had today. And of course, a big, big thank you to Victoria Rock. And how cool is that name indeed? Thank you for joining in today. Much love from me. I will see you again in the morning when we're back for more story time. Bye-bye. <laughs>